Welcome to part 5 of the Organic Functional Group tutorial series. This tutorial is going to focus on intermolecular forces and how they apply to water solubility of organic compounds. Let's get started. Alright, so whenever we talk about solubility, there should be a, a theme that comes to mind. Like dissolves like. And those of us that are familiar with this expression, this expression realize that there's a missing piece, right? It's like intermolecular forces dissolve like intermolecular forces. And the intermolecular forces tends to get um, omitted when we talk about it. So um, we're going to focus on water. So the terms hydro, of course, refers to water. And philic is the derivation of that word is loving, right? So this would be a water-loving compound or a water-loving functional group. And then we have hydrophobic, which is water-fearing. So we've all got our phobias, even um, chemical compounds, all right? So it's through polarity. We think about water. We recognize that water is a highly polar compound. And so whenever we think about water, we want to instantly think about its partial, large partial positive and partial negative charges. So organic molecules that have a lot of polar groups are going to be hydrophilic and interact with water through H bonding. Um, Nonpolar organic groups, they are not going to want to be around water, so we'll call them water fearing. All right, so let's think about the groups we've learned. So obviously, right, an alcohol that can be an H bond donor and acceptor or amines, and I will just show a primary amine. Of course, we can substitute these hydrogens, at least we can substitute at least one of these hydrogens for another R group, right? So we still have an H bond donor. And then we have, um, of course, the carboxylic acids, also H bond donors, and even amides to a lesser degree. So when we think about H bond donors, we think about NOF, right? Nitrogen or oxygen or fluorine bonded to hydrogen. Now the H bond acceptors those will be functional groups where we're missing these three bonds, but the molecules do contain nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. And because these are such highly electronegative elements, they will carry a partial negative charge, and so they can accept the partial, they can interact with the partial positive of an H bond donor. And so here, we're looking at things like ethers, or aldehydes, or ketones, um, or various esters, like the thioesters, or the carboxylic esters. Alrighty. Now, um, basically, with organic molecules, we tend to have the nonpolar hydrocarbon backbone that hates water, right? So the hydrocarbons, they hate water. But then we have these polar functional groups that do want to interact with water. So our rule of thumb for water solubility is one polar functional group, right? Typically the ones we've described here can help to solubilize um, up to four to six non-polar carbons. And so this is a really helpful rule of thumb for predicting water solubility. So now let's look at a couple of examples to practice applying these concepts. All right, so here we have a data table and we recognize the CHO. We have a bunch of aldehydes here. And then below, we have a series of ketones. So let's focus on the aldehydes first. 
So we notice as we look down the series, we see that the nonpolar hydrocarbon chain is getting longer and longer. Here are the names, just for reference. There's our boiling points, but we're going to focus on the water solubility. So notice that we go when we have formaldehyde or a very small nonpolar hydrocarbon, we have a very soluble compound. But as the nonpolar hydrocarbon chain increases, we see lower and lower water solubility. Right? So as we look here, we see that the carbon chain right, is increasing in length or size. And at the same time that the carbon chain is increasing, we notice that water solubility is decreasing. Okay, and we'll observe that this is a common trend among all functional groups. So let's look here at the ketones. And we see once again the same trend, that we have an increasing carbon chain. And at the same time that the carbon chain increases, we see a decrease in water solubility. All righty. So basically what happens is, right, so when the, now we have room there, so when the carbon chain, right, gets too long, that you can think of it almost like a scorpion tail whipping about, repelling the polar water, right? Then what happens is the nonpolar interactions take over. Right, they become dominant. And eventually, the compounds are no longer water-soluble. And water solubility decreases. All righty. So um, let's take a, um, and look at another example here to um, reinforce the, this concept. So we'll bring in the next page. Get it centered. Great, okay. So let's look at another example. This one uh, is a little more complicated. So we ha here's the chemical formula for THF, noticing it has four um, nonpolar carbons, and then diethyl ether. You know how to draw the structure for that, our two ethyl groups. And notice here we also have four nonpolar carbons. The interesting thing is, is that THF is water soluble, However, the diethyl ether is insoluble in water. All right, so we're going to add to the to what the knowledge we learned before. All righty, so let's think about this. With the THF, the nonpolar hydrocarbon part is locked into a ring. And so this polar, this polar partial negative on the ether oxygen is able to accept an H bond from water, right? So whenever we see water, we always see partial plus on the hydrogens and partial minus on the oxygens. And so here we have the H bond, right? So there's our H bond. Um, with the ether, however, remember that we have these tetrahedral carbons and there's a lot of rotation there. So even though there is a partial negative on the oxygen, these, um, these nonpolar hydrocarbon arms, these can rotate and, um, and, and repel the water. All right, so the water can never get in. It wants to. It feels an electrostatic attraction to the oxygen of the ether, but the arms of the ether uh, will um, repel it. So um, I'll do a little demonstration here where if we think about my nose being the oxygen atom, when I'm THF, if these are my carbon chains, they're locked behind in the ring. 
So if you could reach through the camera, if you were water and you could reach through the camera, you could touch my nose as water and solubilize me. However, when I'm diethyl ether, and these are my nonpolar carbon arms, then they're basically rotating and spinning. And so now if you were able to reach through the camera, you wouldn't be able to touch my nose because the rotation of these hydrocarbon chains would repel the water. So this is an example where we're bringing together our understanding of intermolecular forces with the structure of the hydrocarbon backbone. So this would really be a mastery question. So now for one final bit of wrap-up, um, let's apply this knowledge to a couple situations. So let's predict whether these compounds will be soluble in oil, which is a very nonpolar solvent, versus water, right, which is very polar. Okay, so ethanol, we see there's our NOF, there's our H bonding, and we see a very small carbon chain, right, only two nonpolar carbons. So we would predict this to be water soluble. However, here's hexane. We don't even need to know the structure, but we do. All carbons and hydrogens, we have a nonpolar substance. It's going to dissolve in oil. Here we have um, cinnamaldehyde. We do have a H bond acceptor here. However, when we look, we see that we have many, right? What do we have? Six, seven, eight. We have at least eight nonpolar carbons. So this is an example where the molecule's a bit conflicted. Right? Part of it would love to accept H bonds from water, but the rest of it is afraid, hydrophobic. The hydrophobic part dominates. So cinnamaldehyde is soluble in oils. O one octanol, right? an eight carbon chain with an alcohol group. So another example, here not only is it an H bond acceptor, but an H bond donor. But once again, the nonpolar chain is too long, so octanol would prefer oil as well. And here we have a fatty acid. We'll study these more in the future, right? So we describe this, right, as a fatty, and then here would be our acid. And so, right, fats and oils. Think about oils. And so this large hydrophobic carbon chain is going to want to interact with the oil. The carboxylic acid part wants the water. Basically, it's a vote, and the acid loses. It's not quite a democracy, though, right? Because one polar group can offset a small number of carbons. All right, and then our last example here, we have a representation of the glucose molecule. And so here we see all of these um, alcohol hydroxy groups that are all H bonders. So we do have the formula, C6H12O6. But um, because we have six carbons, but we have many polar groups and even an ether group there. So glucose is definitely soluble in water. All righty. So this concludes the... Um, the tutorial on water solubility with organic functional groups. Take a few minutes now to work some homework questions to reinforce your understanding.